Do you see how I just replaced the x with the negative x? And then you work it down, you see what you get. What's negative x squared? Plus 4. What's x squared plus 4? That's f of x. That's exactly what I have back here. Right there, that proves it's even. If you start here and you end here, that means you have an even function. How oh, you'll feel okay with that one so far. Okay. What that says is that instead of doing this integral the way it is, I know that this is going to equal 2 times the integral 0 to 3. Not that. X squared plus 4. I'm going to let you do that the rest of the way out. What you would do here, take your integral, evaluate it from 0 to 4. No. No, no you wouldn't. 0 to 3. Go from 0 to 3 and then multiply that by 2. Has anyone done that already? Why don't you work on it? Let's see if we can get a couple of the same answers up here. Are there any questions on the even part of the board before I erase it? Did you understand the concept? Even means symmetric about the y. You prove it's even, that means the area on the left and the area on the right will be exactly the same. Therefore, you go from 0 to, to a, whatever that number is, and multiply by 2. Just be very careful. These numbers absolutely must match up for this to work for even functions. If that was a negative 4 and that was a 3, all bets are off. You can't do that anymore. Well, plugging in the zero is a whole lot better than plugging in that, that negative three, huh? That's nice. That really is nice. Make sure you have parentheses there if you're going to do it. Nine plus twelve times two, twenty-one times two, forty-two. Forty-two. Do that. Forty-two. This I think it is. 3 cubed over 3 is 3 squared, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 12 is 21, 21 times 2 is 42, so cool deal. Do you get 42 as well? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So it makes it a little bit easier since we're plugging in 0. <clears throat> now, odd functions. Hmm. What do you know about odd functions? Symmetrical. They are symmetrical, very good. About Across the y? No, that would be even. Not the x. If they were across the x, wouldn't be a function. Think about that. Across the y equals x. No, that's an inverse. Darn it! Darn it! What is this darn thing? I don't know. You guessed everything else. No, you have not Origin. Origin. Exactly right. It's symmetric about the origin, which means that uh, it's a basic rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. So it says, well, it says this, actually. It says when you plug in negative, you get negative of the function. <laughs> it says this. When you plug in, like, negative 3, it's going to give you some value. If you were to plug in 3, it's going to give negative of that value. So it's going to take it from up here and move it down here. That's a rotation of 180 degrees or a what they call symmetric about the origin. So that is the definition of odd. And what it means is it is symmetric but it's symmetric about the origin. Not in the axis. <coughs> Let me give you the picture before I even, even do this. Here's what an odd function would normally look like. Uh, x cubed is an odd function. x to the fifth is an odd function.
that's an odd function. Thank you very much. I know. I <laughs> you know what? Maybe maybe I do a little bit different here for you. Wow. It's easier to see this way. Uh, that would also be. In, let's let's pretend that's an odd function. A little bit easier to see here. Let's say I'm going from negative a. Tell me something about this area and that area if it's an odd function and symmetrical about the origin. Tell me something about those areas. No, no, no. Be zero. Wait, explain something about the areas first. This and this. They are the same area. Would you agree on that? Since yeah. it's symmetric, they have to be the same. It's a rotation of 180 degrees. That is the same. Now, tell me something about net signed area. Why zero? What net signed area says take the area above and the area below, the area above is positive, the area below is negative, and see how much change you have, and here would be zero. There would be zero net area out of this thing. Does that make sense? That would be for net area. If it asks for total area, total area, it would be exactly the same as an even function. Hmm. Yeah, it would be this times 2, just like an even function was for total area. Now, a definite integral does not automatically calculate total area. A definite integral automatically calculates net signed area unless you have what in there? Absolute value. That's exactly right. So, what this says, if your function is odd, an integral is going to calculate the net signed area. Therefore, if you have an odd function, if f is odd, And I'm going from negative a to a. Notice that those numbers, they have to be the same. Do you see why they have to be the same? If I go just a little bit closer right here, are the areas the same anymore? Mm -hmm. Clearly not. So they have to be the same. But what do you know? If you're going to take a, an integral of an odd function, which is symmetric about the origin, and you're going to go from negative a to a, which says where you end is exactly the same, but opposite means your area is going to be exactly the same, how much is that integral? Zero. Oh, shoot, that's nice. Do you even have to do the integral? No. No, that's a beautiful thing. Not unless I ask you for total area. If I say total area, then this is what it does. This is above and beyond what, what the book does right now. But if I ask you for total area, then it would be this, right? And what that would be is, because they are equal areas, you'd have 2 times 0 to a, just like you had an even function. It basically, think about what it would do. Just think for a second. What absolute value does, absolute value pretends that anything below the x-axis is above the x-axis, right? So absolute value, I hope this makes sense, absolute value would go, ah, what's that do? Changes from odd to even. See it? Kind of cool, right? And then you have exactly the same thing for even function. That would be for total area. If it's just like this, though, given to you just like that, that implies net signed area. That means areas are the same, but on opposite sides of the x-axis, that means the area <coughs> is equal to zero. Hence, the integral would be equal to zero. Would you like to see one application of this? Sure. You're going to like this. You're going to ask for 30 of these on test. Well, maybe five. Maybe five. Are we going to get it? You can always hope. <laughs> There's one question on this one. Expectation leads to disappointment. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> One person. Never mind. We lie. We don't want that on there. No, you don't. <laughs> the, the thing about using these properties is that you have to prove that you can. You can't just say, I think I can. <laughs> Therefore, I go. Because all of those would be zero for you guys. You'd be like, oh, negative three or three. Zero. Oh, I'm awesome. No, you're not awesome. Well, I mean, you might be awesome, but not at that. Uh, you got to prove that it actually works. Just like you had to prove it was even, you have to prove this was odd. Now, this says I can do a lot of integrals that otherwise I couldn't do. <coughs> do you see why it says that? It says, my, my gosh, I mean, do you know how to do that integral? I don't right now. I mean, just looking at it, I'm thinking trig substitution, but you don't know trig substitution. You know substitution, substitution. You know use substitution. So that's off the table. No matter what you do with the substitution, that is not going to work. Take, the, take uh, 1 plus x squared. 
Derivative is 2x. That doesn't appear. Take sine x. There's no cosine. You're stuck. The only thing you can do is say, well, it's going from negative 3 to 3. Let's see if this is even or let's see if this is odd. If it's even, we're probably stuck anyway because they still can't do the integral. Even doesn't get you away from the integral. just says I can multiply by 2 and have a 0 in it. That's nice. Odd gets you away from the integral. That's even better. So let's try to see if this thing is odd. What you do is you start out with your function. That's what we're trying to get to, but maybe have a negative one. And you say, what I want to have is I want to plug in negative x, and let's see what it does for us. So take everywhere you see x, and see what happens. So negative x, negative x. Well, if I do that, this actually isn't that, it looks bad. It's really not that bad. Square root of 1 minus, or sorry, 1 plus negative x squared. How much is that? Wait, minus x squared or plus x squared? Plus x squared. Okay. Does anybody remember anything about sine of negative x? Yes, that is a property. It says sine of negative x is the same as negative sine of x. If you don't believe me, look it up. That's a true statement. Um, sine is, when you think about it, an odd function. It is inherently an odd function because it does this and it does that. It's, it's symmetrical about the origin, right? So knowing that sine's an odd function says this absolutely must be the case right there. Sine of negative x has to be negative sine of x. It will work out for you. So that's true. Well, look what we can do. This is equal to negative sine x over the square root of 1 plus x squared. Which is what you Yeah. This, is, this right here, this is f of x. So this is negative f of x. So right there, is it odd or not? Odd. If this happens, it's definitely odd. What's not so odd, which is awesome, is that we can just do this and go, how much is the integral? Zero. 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 Sweet. Didn't even have to do it. It's zero. How many points have we talked about today? Yeah.